Hey there guys, Neil here with a not so much of a review or anything like that, but more of how to repurpose your old Android smartphone and turn it into a digital camera. So you may be buying a new cell phone soon and you don't know what to do with your old cell phone. Um, you don't want to necessarily throw it away. You don't have anyone to hand it off to. You might not like the amount of money you get back for for by the trade-in value. So it's just sitting around or maybe you're going on a trip and you don't want to take you're not going to be taking your cell phone, but you want to take pictures and not necessarily put down a lot of money for a new camera. Well, that's where uh, you can use your old cell phone with a uh, uh, if you are with a combination of different apps to lighten the load on the battery and have quick access to a, a few different um, editing tools, uh, social, uh, easy way to share social media and all of that good stuff. So uh, the first thing you're going to do when you get your phone or to follow use some of the apps that I'm going to talk about is you're going to jump into your settings and find out which version of Android you're using. If your um, device is within the past, I want to say one to two years, you're probably on um, a newer version of Android. Ideally, you're going to be on Android 4.0 and above. Uh, or, sorry, you should be. I, I would say you should be on Android 4.0 and above. Ideally, on Android um, 4.1 and above. So, in this case, I'm using a Samsung Captivated Galaxy S1 device. I put Cyanogen Mod on it, so currently I'm on Android 4.4.4. So, these tools will work nicely. Um, but, as I said, if you're on 4.1 or higher, you should be good. On 4.0 or um, from 4.0 to 4.1, a couple of the apps won't work, but for the most part, you should be okay. And there are alternatives to do a search for first related features. Um, so with that, the first thing I would recommend doing is putting your phone into airplane mode. So obviously you don't, you'll stop getting the notifications for a SIM card and that you need to enter a SIM card and things like that. Just avoid that and have it stop searching for it as you probably won't have a SIM card in the device. Uh, next up is to find out if your um, device can be factory reset and signed in without a SIM card to begin with. In the case of my device, I can do that. So I've already done a reset. I've installed the apps that I'm going to be talking about. Um, if you cannot do that, I recommend uninstalling all apps. And If you already have some of these apps that I talk about on install, you can keep them. But getting rid of apps that you're not going to use just to avoid background seeing usage on the battery, just random processes being used up and things like that, just to keep things as minimal as possible. Um, I'll talk about something at the end, but I do recommend using uh, Green... Actually, I'll just tell you it now, but I do recommend installing Greenify just in the event that you cannot, you're cannot. you not on a custom ROM. So let's say you're on a Samsung Galaxy S4 or a LG G2, and there's, div there's certain apps that you notice that are running in the background. You don't want to have them. You know, so, um, apps that the manufacturer might include, like... Um, yeah, yeah, or sorry, Yellow Pages or maybe AT&T Navigator or something like that. Whatever apps that you don't necessarily use and don't want to run. And let's say you can um, disable them, then using Greenify can kind of help with that. It'll keep those in apps in check so they don't uh, veer wildly out of control and use up extra um, battery, um, just general extra battery. So if you have any questions on that, you can always get in touch with me. I do use it on my main device. So I can help out with that if you want more information. Um, once you've done that, you clean up your device. If you wanted to get rid of um, things that don't necessarily, you don't necessarily need, you need on your device. You've deleted um, old videos, old pictures, things that you've already backed up or things you don't really need on this device you're good to go and um, so that with that we'll get started. So the first thing I recommend doing is installing Nova Launcher. Um, from my experience I've noticed there's very few um, custom UIs that allow you to change the number of home screens. For me that's important just because I want to have minimal um, interference with what I want to get to as far as different apps go. So I recommend um, you can install the free version of Nova Launcher. There is a uh, prime version that you can pay for to get other things like gestures and things like that if you want to have um, a few other additional features. But the uh, main feature here is that um, I'm only going to have one um, home screen. My desktop grid is set to 3x4 just for the one widget which I'm going to add and a few home screen icons. 
Um, I've turned off the scroll effect. I've kept it as simple as possible. Turned off wallpaper scrolling. Um, my app drawer is set to 4x4 four four as well. It's a vertical drawer. Um, no transparency. These folders are pretty straightforward. I've set the, um, sp the speed of the launcher to just my de device default, so it's not doing anything extra. So it's as minimal as possible um, from here. From here, you're going to install an app called A Better Camera. Um, I recommend installing this camera app because it has a number of camera modes built right in, including a simple, just your standard camera uh, picture. So if you want to take a pic quick picture, you're good to go. It has a feature called DRO, is D -R -O, um, which enhances your standard picture so it's a little bit more clear and crisper and looks a little bit better but stop short of um, HDR um, pictures. I can compare it to the jump between 480p to DVD versus let's say DVD to Blu-ray. So you get the, um, there's a noticeable change, but not it's not necessarily perfect, but then, and also not as much as that jump to a HD picture or HDR picture that looks a lot more cleaner. You'll see a noticeable difference. But the app also has other features like panorama mode, pre-shot, best shot. So certain camera modes that other device manufacturers might include, but might not necessarily be included on all devices. From here, you're going to install another app called A Better Camera Widget. So what this does is it lets you um, create shortcuts to the various camera modes. So from here, I'll go into um, my widget picker. And you'll see that I have three different widgets that I can pick from for a, um, a better camera. And there's a standard one that just has a simple camera, um, HDR, night mode, camera, panorama, and a flashlight. A launcher, the a full launcher, which includes um, the same ones in a few other modes. I'm going to include the uh, grid for a better camera just so I can show off the customizability of it. So you can pick whichever modes work for you. So in this case, these are ones that I had picked before. So a simple shot, the regular one, HDR, panorama, night mode. Um, I forget what this one is offhand. But, um, that's actually burst shot and then group. A barcode scanner and then a quick access to the settings. Hit and I recommend and I do recommend keeping the settings button there. So in case you want to change them around or if you prefer one mode over another, you can change that easily. And once that is created, you're you're all set. And once you and then as soon as you want to jump to a specific mode, let's say now I want to take a panorama picture, I'll touch um, icon. And it'll launch a better camera in panorama mode and. Um, I can take that panoramic picture. So, pretty simple, straightforward. You get a full featured camera, nothing too difficult, nothing too extravagant. Um, from here, now let's say you've taken some pictures and you want to create a collage. I do recommend using InstaSize. Um, it's, I've been using it for a while um, back before Instagram allowed for various picture sizes. So, you can not only put share full size pictures to um, Instagram, but you can also create photo collages. So if there's three or four shots from a particular location you want to um, share at once, then you can do that. It also allows you to change background cult, um, colors, add text, and things like that. So it has a number of different options that um, you can um, I also recommend uh, installing Snapseed because it's a good uh, mobile full-featured um, app or sorry picture editor because it has a number of different modes you can do things like crop and tune the image but then also apply a number of different filters so let's say you took a standard picture somewhere because you didn't have time to make it um, an hd picture well you can go in and use hdr mode adjust the levels a little bit and you can set um make it an hdr looking picture um you can also heal up the picture so let's say you took one and there's a person that got in the way you can take them out. So let's say I want to take out this Insta size icon itself from this picture for some reason. Then I can erase it like that and it will go away. Now it disappeared. I don't have to see anymore. Works the same with natural pictures. So there's a number of different features available. You can turn it, add grainy film, the retro lux, turn it into black and white, add a frame. Um, if you if you're a Google Plus or you don't necessarily have to be a Google Plus user, but if you check out Snapseed on Google Plus every so often, they share 
tips and tricks on editing your pictures and using Snapseed um, as well. Um, so from here, if you're on a vacation and let's say you only have a Wi-Fi connection at your hotel, um, I say Wi-Fi specifically because in this case we're an airplane mode, we don't have a SIM card. The only connection that can be made is via Wi-Fi. I recommend installing um, Dropbox and or um, Google Photos. I re I used, I've used Dropbox for some time. It may, it's just easy. I set it to automatically back up pictures on Wi-Fi so when there's a connection, it backs it up. Uh, boom, done, done. Uh, there's nothing else I have to think about. Um, I also, I have kind of also started recommending Google Photos more because of the unlimited high quality photos backup. So if you don't want to worry about storage space or your pictures, it's the way to go. And also if you're taking, let's say, pictures of family or friends or whatever group you're in on the vacation, then you can do a search um, by faces as well or by date you can it automatically cre will cr now also create um albums by location so if you take a bunch of pictures over a period of time a new album will be created um and then you can also create shareable albums that um, either you can um know have people get notified when you add pictures or have people dump all their pictures into that album so everybody can share the same one album and everyone's pictures are shared all together um so that's really all there is for that um, now, let's say you want to share to social media. For me, I use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram the most, so you see my icons at the bottom. But the trick here, as far as saving battery life, is that I've only installed the Instagram app because there's no mobile way to share to Instagram. But in the case of Facebook and Twitter, the mobile website actually works really well, so I installed a browser called Adblock Browser, which is available for free in Google Play. So that way when I'm signing into any website or visiting the web, let's say I'm at the hotel on my vacation and I want to browse the web, then I don't have to worry about um, ads but were, um, interfering with my um, networks or my internet speeds or anything like that or even with my picture sharing experience. Since I don't have a connection right now, it's not going to load any page. But um, as you can see, this is Adblock Browser. I can go into... Um, or actually, before I say that, if you want to set the home screen shortcuts after installation, just go to Facebook.com, and then you'll touch Page, and then you'll touch Add to Home Screen and Add a Shortcut, and you can do this for any page. So let's say you don't want to use the official Gmail client, or you do not want to install the Yahoo Mail client or Outlook client or anything like that. You can go to Outlook.com or Mail.Yahoo.com, add a home screen shortcut, and you go to their web page, and you don't have to worry about background syncs or anything like that and you save time and effort, or even if you do have a um, data connection that you're using in that uh, on the international travel, this way you're not um, bogged down with syncing in the background or apps um, randomly just syncing and using up your data without you knowing it. Um, and then the benefit of Adblock Browser as well is that um, you can control what the if you want to see... Um, acceptable ads or not so for me i think i've i think i've turned it off if i remember right i haven't really played around actually didn't actually has taken so i have all ad non all advertising turned off that way i don't get any ads but if you want to support people who are using good advertisements wherever you may go then of course leave that on but i just have the standard settings there so that way it blocks ads and i can browse the web without uh, too much other interference. Um, so that's really all there is for that. I mean, that's the easiest way and best way to um, sh minimize battery usage and use your camera as a um, picture device, picture taking device for the solely for just that purpose. Um, I was gonna include uh, things like text messaging or anything like that, but I haven't seen a way to include. Um, uh, set up WhatsApp on multiple devices. I don't know if that's possible. Um, I do know that if you use something like Hang Google Hangouts, and you can use that on multiple devices, maybe Viber, maybe um, other apps like that, but um, I haven't really researched that too much. I have kept my email sync on, so if you do need to for Gmail, so if you use Gmail as your primary account, then that's definitely beneficial. But um, always also make sure you have at quick, or I also want to make sure you have quick access to your gallery app so that way you can delete unnecessary pictures and keep track of pictures that way. 
Uh, one of the benefits I didn't mention before as well about Snapseed is that it saves pictures that you save in a different folder. So you have your original saved as well. So in case you make a mistake or you realize you like the original more than the, the filtered version, then you can, uh, of course, keep or delete the uh, Snapseed version and keep the original or vice versa. Um, so that's really all there is for that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just need more information about any of the apps I talk about, you can always email me at headphonesneal at yahoo.com or find me on Twitter at PatelN01. But that's all for this particular video. Thanks for watching and listening, and until next time.